Now, across Texas, the issue is. I'm Rudy Kosky in Austin. I'm Greg Grugan in Houston. Stephen Dial has the week off. And this is Texas, the issue is. The issue is Governor Greg Abbott storming back to Texas. He's now back home from his economic development trip, taking on criticism regarding hurricane response and several other hot topics waiting for him. I started our conversation with the president's accusation that he couldn't reach Abbott or other state leaders after the storm hit Houston. President Biden has actually called me multiple times after disasters from or calling to my same phone number every single time. Also, an aide who works under the president, the, the FEMA director, called me on that very same phone number. There has been no call uh, from Joe Biden to that phone number at all during the entirety of this entire disaster. It just seemed like a bizarre attack, probably by his political people. But I think what it really reveals is the struggles of a failing campaign and a failing presidency. When the storm hit, you were out of the country on an economic development trip. Before you left, this storm was tracking to Mexico. Do you regret doing this trip regardless? My mind has never moved away from the state of Texas. Uh, I've been uh, getting up early in the morning to uh, make phone calls to Texas, uh, working through the day, and then in the evening, making phone calls to Texas again. And so I, may, I have remained actively involved uh, in a hurricane response that I know has been very well handled. Uh, at, at the same time, uh, we cannot lose sight of what the issue is. And that is, we have to be able to face hurricanes, face disasters, and not lose power for days on end. Texans deserve better. We will get to the bottom of this. Not only you're trying to managing this crisis, but you're doing an economic development trip and you've actually made some really substantial deals. Temple getting uh, the announcement of a manu manufacturing location coming there. Is that why you really needed to be on that part of the world to sign these deals, to nail these deals down? But it goes much broader than that. So the first stop that we had was in Taiwan. Uh, Texas, before this trip, had only one uh, foreign office, and that was in Mexico. Uh, now we have a foreign office in Taiwan. Uh, second, the, the deal that you announced uh, was in uh, Korea. Also in Korea was my visit to Samsung. You're there in the Austin area. Uh, the, the, what Samsung has done they more than doubled their initial investment in that massive facility up in Taylor, Texas. Now we're working on all of the related businesses that will be suppliers or uh, service providers uh, for Samsung to make sure that we can attract them uh, to the greater Taylor and Austin area. Uh, and we are working on some uh, expansion issues involving not just Toyota, uh, but also with service providers of them uh, in the San Antonio area. Then we'll be going up to Tokyo, working on uh, more broad-based issues that will be very helpful to the entire Texas economy, adding, again, thousands of jobs and billions of dollars of investment. The numbers on the border continue to drop here in Texas. Are you pleased with that? If you look at the entire state of Texas and the states of New Mexico, California, uh, and Arizona, and the, the three other states, illegal immigration continues to increase. In Texas, in the past year, since we put up all of the structural barriers, illegal immigration has decreased 74%. You'll see news coming out about increased efforts uh, to build even more barriers. You know, everybody's talking about Biden's age, Biden's age. Are people fixating too much on his age and not about the policy when there are clear differences? So Americans are angry about the policies imposed by the Biden administration. But second, when you see his bumbling, on national TV, on international trips, his inability to complete sentences is baffling to Americans and disconcerting to those. And they, they see someone who's not gonna be able to fulfill four more years in office. There's certainly a lot to talk about from that conversation, which is why my word is whirlwind. Greg, what's your word? Rudy, this wasn't easy, but I'm going with snafu. And I'm guessing most <laughs> of you know what that stands for. Oh, yeah, you're right. Mark Jones with Rice University sitting in for our Stephen Dial. Do you have a word for what the governor just said? Uh, I think it's also tough, but I'll go with politics. All right. And with that, the three of us will be back after this break to break down what the governor just had to say. 
Governor Greg Abbott swinging back hard, saying President Biden lied about him being MIA and holding up federal hurricane aid to Texas. Greg, whose punch landed with folks there in Houston? Geez, Rudy, talk about your unforced error. Joe Biden's the leader of the freaking free world with the CIA, FBI, Pentagon, and dozens of other high-powered agencies at his beck and call. And somehow he can't make contact with the governor of Texas seems pretty weak and particularly weak when you are trying really hard to look competent. No question Biden has crossed sabers with Abbott and Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick on a near constant basis. But when it comes to natural disasters, folks expect all the partisan crap to be kicked to the curb and the president publicly suggesting Texas leadership was somehow MIA when he reached out seems far fetched and frankly to suggest it even if it were true it's pretty counterproductive during a crisis. So, Rudy, to answer your question, I'd say Governor Abbott and Lieutenant Governor Patrick prevailed pretty clearly in this one. Yeah, and it's a shame. Uh, Patrick even brought this up in previous uh, news conferences that they're having to spend so much time dealing with that when they should be focusing in on um, hurricane recovery and they don't want to deal with the politics. And, and speaking of Patrick, during the storm, the lieutenant governor uh, taking the title of acting governor, heard that a lot. You know, the governor Abbott didn't seem to mind that. Uh, Mark Jones, as a university professor, you understand constitutional power sharing clauses. Did Patrick seem to do everything right? Oh, What's your read? Right, no, Lieutenant Governor Patrick did everything right. The governor is abroad. Uh, he's always the acting uh, governor, governor when Governor Abbott is away. In this case, he needed to take a more proactive role because of Hurricane Barrel, and I think everything he did was by the book and exceptional. Uh, I think we just had some misinformation coming from the president's office and then uh, unfortunately repeated by some local office holders here in Houston as well as some local media outlets. You know, Dan Patrick certainly is a Houston guy. He's from there. Greg, has the center point storm response, though, overshadowed how he has managed the state response? Rudy, folks here are hot, both literally and figuratively. Many believe center point let cost cutting and profit making plate too big a role in their preparation, which was clearly impacted by forecasting, which proved less than accurate. Bottom line, when this is all said and done, they've got some explaining to do to Lieutenant Governor Patrick and the Public Utility Commission. Let's remember Centerpoint has been awarded a monopoly to service, not just the fourth biggest city in America, but also most of its highly populated suburbs. With that profit-making privilege comes loads of responsibility. And their performance thus far in a Cat 1 hurricane does not generate a ton of confidence given bigger batter storms could easily be heading our way. So yes, Patrick's role as acting governor has been overshadowed by center point. And I think you, Mark and I all know he's unlikely to forget it. Oh yeah, he's made it clear he's not going to forget it. You know, in the previous uh, news conferences, he said, look, uh, we're going to figure out what went wrong. The governor's saying we're going to figure out what went wrong and also why the lights keep on going off when storms come through uh, the Houston area, not just this one. Now, in that conversation that I had with the governor, he said that he's going to he's been working the storm and also nailing down foreign business deals while abroad. Mark, is he bringing jobs to Texas and maybe more later? Is that giving him some cover from this storm fallout? Oh, yeah, I think without question, this was a pre-planned trip. Uh, it occurred after Beryl was already, or before Beryl arrived. Uh, it's going to bring jobs to the entire state of Texas. And him being uh, outside of the state of Texas didn't adversely affect Texas's response whatsoever. Okay, we'll end it there. You can see the interview or any of our past interviews by going to our YouTube pages. And you can also visit our social media sites to continue the conversation. And the Fox Texas Trio will be back next week with another hot political issue. In the meantime, don't forget to let us know what you think the issue is.